tō paitina tanga te katoa. Hanga e te atoa he ngā kauhau ki roto ki tēnā ki tēnā o mātou, whakatungia ko wairua tapu, hei awhina, hei tohu tohu ia mātou, hei ako hoki i ngā mahi mō tēnei ata, āke, 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 āmene. Tēnā koutou katoa, my name is Miriana Tepere, I am the Māori Health Promotion Strategist here with the Whānau from Health Promotion Forum. First and foremost, welcome to our second webinar shop for the 2003 ser- uh, 2023 series. Uh, and this webinar shop is Pacific Health Promotion, the Lotu Factor in Health, Healing and Wholeness. Uh, before I get on, before I pass the raka over to our Executive Director, Sione Tuitahi again, just a few housekeeping um, things to go through. Um, please, if you can keep your um, mic on mute, that would be super helpful in terms of audio. Um, we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar or the webinar shop. So if you have a question, please don't be shy. Put it in our chats. And uh, Lavinia, our comms manager, she will she will take care of your question throughout the webinar shop. Uh, also, hopefully you got a chance to um, complete the pre webinar shop quiz that may help you with the, uh, some of the content today. Uh, and lastly, with housekeeping evaluation, you will get a question in the chat. Please answer the uh, evaluation. That helps us a lot. Um, and just um, introduce yourself as well to, to everyone in the chat. Um, but we really need the evaluation. That'd be super helpful for us. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to uh, Sione Tuitahi to give a brief welcome for our esteemed guest speakers. Kia ora ra. Kia ora, Mariana, and thank you very much. Talofa, maroe rei, kia ora na, namaste, kulobinaka, talohani, and the rest of the wonderful uh, Pacific welcome. May I say aloha? Um, you know, I say that because of uh, that wonderful um, American idol who, for the first time, a Hawaiian, a Pacific, no person to win the American Idol. Uh, I thought music is beautiful, so I mentioned that. But now back to our um, session for today. It is my honor and privilege to welcome and to introduce our three speakers uh, for today. The Reverend David Finau, uh, leader of the Pacific community. As some of you know, who might have watched the a uh, great uh, Aotearoa produced film, uh, White, Red and, and Brass. Uh, Tevita is one of the stars, as you might have picked up. He just returned from the mainland in the States after a promotional tour of that wonderful Aotearoa uh, production. Our um, other uh, speakers are Dr. Johnny Javier. He will be joining us from Sydney where he teaches, among other things that he is uh, busy uh, with. And uh, our uh, third speaker, who, was, who will also facilitate our session today, is our very own um, here at the Health Promotion Forum, Dr. Riami Puloka, who is our Deputy Executive Director on Health Promotion, but also our Senior Pacific Health Promotion uh, Strategist. As you know, the topic is um, spirituality. That is the essence. And for many decades, it was not easy at all to introduce and to talk about the spiritual dimension of well-being at the national level, and especially in on the international level. You know, the spaces like uh, the World Health Organization, the International Union for Health Promotion and Education, but I'm proud uh, and humble at the same time to say that uh, with the collaborative effort of you, the health promotion workforce and the wider public health workforce in our sectors, with our small team here at Health Promotion Forum, we have been able to contribute and influence those spaces. If you have read your Geneva Charter for Wellbeing, for instance, you might have seen that spiritual well-being indigenous knowledge and leadership, planetary health are mentioned. If you read the two, if you have read the two legacy statements from our great conference that was held in Ronorua way back um, four years ago, 2019, you will have seen 
that again spirituality is mentioned. And for indigenous peoples, including Tangatapenua and most of the peoples of the Pacific, the spiritual dimension of well-being is, is very important. And now the rest of the world are waking up to realize that that is actually the case, whether you call it ethical, moral, spiritual, cultural. You know, it's about there is life beyond this material plane of existence. And there is a greater power than we mere mortal uh, human beings. So we will explore today's topic from a Pacific perspective, from Pacific experience. But I hope it will resonate with you, whatever um, spiritual context and cultural background you come from, you know, uh, do contribute. So without much further ado, I'd like to hand it over now uh, to Riyami mm -hmm. Pulok uh, to continue our session. Thank you, Riyami. Malawi and and thank you very much. And uh, and if I may ask the uh, operator to allow my uh, my handsome face to be seen, because uh, my camera is, is uh, oh. it said I cannot uh, turn it on. However, um, thank you so much, Siona, for the introduction, and and you covered very well the topic that we'll be discussing. And of course, uh, a great welcome to um, to all of you. Uh, especially to our distinct uh, cast and speaker. Um, they are colleagues of mine. We, we go a long way and, uh, and we, we, we all grew up in the same place and, and we have done a lot of work and it's such a, um, a privilege to be able to, um, to have them among us. Today's topic, of course, I, um, we thought of the lot of factor. And Lotto in this context of our conversation of our Talanoa today includes churches and all the um, faith-based organization, religion, faith, and spirituality as Sione has alluded to. And spirituality in general includes the indigenous um, concept of both the seen and the unseen. Lotto has become part of the Pacific people's culture and identity. Churches has become the village here in our terror for the Pacific people. Reciprocity, giving and receiving, helping and being helped is very much part of the indigenous Pacific culture as well as churches and as well as the law too. There's so many people now died so early, prematurely of preventable causes. And I come up with this equation. And the equation is, is, is says that preventable death times premature death equal Pacific people divided by lot of factor. And that's where the conversation is going to be focused today. Where does the lotu factor comes in? Can we uh, somehow have the lotu factor act as a platform where we will help, we'll give, and receive the gift of healing and the, and become whole as people living here in Aotearoa or wherever we are. So with that little introduction, I welcome our speaker today. And um, Sione, if you are here from Australia or maybe still driving up to the vacation, you will join us. But uh, let me ask uh, Reverend Tevida, the, the very recent actor in, in the movie. Uh, he just came back from Hollywood actually. And uh, I invite Tevita to begin um, to share some of, of his experience, especially he, he is a, a great advocate and very passionate about community development and translating the faith into action where people are. Malo Vida Tevita. Malo Vidyami. And also I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, 
Sean Dita his uh, introduction and the welcoming by um, Miriam. Thank you so much. And also to Emma and your team. I would like to congratulate your, uh, your team. Uh, you've done a great job. Uh, I've been following uh, what you've been doing over the years. And I'd like to uh, congratulate you. And thank you so much for the great job you are uh, doing. Uh, not only among agencies, but also uh, to the community and uh, the government and beyond New Zealand. Uh, thank you so much for what you've been doing. I would also like to uh, acknowledge the great faith that William has on me. I do not know, uh, as I uh, shared with him, that I'm no expert, you know, on the lotto factor, even though I am a church minister, and uh, also in the area of uh, health and well-being, um, I am someone who uh, lives and uh, work among the community. However, I will try my best to share with you uh, some of uh, what. I perceive uh, as something that may uh, uh, help you understand where I am and uh, also the work I'm doing. I'm very sorry about uh, uh, sharing that uh, many and Chen have been doing. No, I have not been to Hollywood. I was in Los Angeles for the premiere of the Red, White, and, uh, and, and Brass. Uh, and thank you so much for the credits uh, that you have given me. I would also like to, to, to state that uh, uh, my background is from the Christian faith. Uh, and uh, so what I share, maybe uh, it will uh, help you understand uh, someone uh, who grew up in Tonga uh, and live here in New Zealand now uh, with a Christian background. However, that does not mean that uh, the Christian faith is the only uh, faith or is the only right or correct uh, uh, or appropriate faith uh, to all of you or all people. But uh, just that you understand, I come from a Christian background. Uh, a lot to uh, factor or the spirituality or the faith uh, is uh, we've heard it's uh, something which is very uh, complicated and uh, when you apply to the extreme it ends up in wars it ends up dividing people and it end it ends up uh, that we judge and be unkind uh, to a lot of, of people uh, when you you know, we, we, you can uh, learn from uh, the wars, uh, we can learn from, especially in the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, lockdown periods in the past uh, two or three years. Uh, families broke up, <clears throat> uh, Christian uh, churches and, and Christians, uh, some they were uh, pro, you know, uh, vaccination, some were anti-vaccination and uh, and a lot and and also um and 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 the faith was not uh, you know in that case it has not been very helpful because we try and promote our faith and yet uh, we divide and um, so uh, likewise with the what we are, are talking about today, uh, there are a whole range of uh, different uh, perspectives. However, <clears throat> I would like to uh, to share an East Siaola or uh, the Wahifunuatonga uh, Methodist Charitable Trust as uh, an example to illustrate uh, uh, what I would speak about. 
I would like to also share with you, you know, uh, area is that uh, there have been some generalizations and also different uh, interpretations of uh, the Christian faith according to which group or uh, church uh, or st a Christian strain that you belong to. For example, uh, one of my very close uh, uh, and respected uh, uh, church minister in Tonga was a, a faith healer. And um, this person uh, associated uh, the disease or the impairments uh, of uh, a patient with sin. And he used to say, uh, because Christ after uh, healing someone, and, and Jesus said to this patient, go and sin no more, which he associated, <clears throat> I mean, this uh, uh, friend of mine, he, because Jesus said, go and sin no more, he therefore interpreted that uh, Jesus was saying, uh, go and sin no more, because uh, that, <clears throat> that disease or what he or she was suffering from, <clears throat> was caused by sin. And that has uh, uh, remained a lot uh, with a lot, you know, a lot of people. Even nowadays, some of, uh, some of my uh, uh, workers are very sad as a result of a suicide. You know, if someone uh, commit suicide, uh, I hope I am excused by, you know, those of you who are listening. If you, uh, if you are, if you are associated with uh, this topic, or um, that you, uh, this does not suit you, uh, I'm very sorry about that. But this, um, but sometimes in a, in the funeral, and the minister say, uh, you know, some of the ministers at the end says, this is the will of God, the way he has, or she has ended his life. And we do not agree with that, uh, you know, we, with that because uh, some people, they try and look for an appropriate text in the Bible, you know, to, <clears throat> to convey a message. And it's very unfortunate at the end of the, of the sermon or the speech, and then he says, God rules uh, at mysteriously, and it is uh, his or her will that this person has ends her life. Let's be thankful to God. Uh, we don't agree with that. I just want to mention that, uh, uh, that one. Uh, and also, um, in the early, um, about almost 20 or more than 20 years ago, there were a lot of uh, um, social issues uh, faced by us within the Methodist Church. And also uh, we were challenged uh, by a lot of people uh, because of the low and underachievement in the education. Uh, there were health issues, uh, there were social uh, issues that uh, people were facing. There was high uh, suicide among the uh, Tongans, and especially within the Methodist uh, uh, Church. We're talking about 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, there were other uh, you know, you know, uh, employment issues, uh, poverty and, and violence drugs and alcohol, all sorts, forms and types of abuse. And uh, we were asked, what is the church doing to this uh, for uh, its members and also uh, the community? We uh, went back and, and prayed, talked, discussed, explored, uh, and had uh, uh, workshops. What? you know, what are we doing? At the same time, 
uh, the issue of same-sex marriage came into the church as well. And it was a time of struggling, you know, uh, uh, for a lot of us within the Methodist church. At the end of the day, we thought, let's go back to the basics. Sunday school, young people, family, parents, and uh, we, we agreed that education would be one of the best tools that we have to address uh, this uh, sickness uh, in the community and also among us. Therefore, we uh, started of uh, creating the, let's have a trust and uh, run with it, that it will address the social issues which the uh, church is facing. One of, the, one of my uh, colleagues, who was also a church minister, uh, was saying to us, what we are preaching from the pulpit, we need to create something that will deliver what we are saying from the pulpit or what we are saying in the church. Let's bring out uh, what we are saying in the church, bring it out of the church and take it to the people. So uh, the organization that we created you know, was based on that. It is Jesus in the society or the gospel in the community. Um, when we look at, uh, at uh, what uh, uh, um, Christ was doing, yes, sometimes he was in the temple or in the synagogues, but most of the time his authority or what he was able to do was rarely proven in the temple, but it was out in the community, on the streets, in the parks, out in the mountains, out in the sea, uh, out where people were working and where people were living and also in households. Uh, and, and hence, we said, we'll have to do uh, what Christ did rather than we left it to the church ministers to look after the, the church, uh, you know, preaching the choirs, et cetera, in the church. But we need something to, to, to deliver that will help uh, uh, with, uh, with that. Hence, uh, we had the Siaola. Uh, we have, uh, rather than um, family violence prevention, we said we need to say family violence, something which is proactive, something, something which is very positive. And we also had a family mo'ulele, which is uh, well-being in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of health. Family uh, yakolele, a well, uh, you know, an educational uh, service or educational uh, program. Family apilele, you know, a, a well-being uh, household, which ends up <clears throat> Uh, sorting out uh, um, management of your finance, you know, financial literacy uh, and numeracy, and ending up in people able to who are able to save, able to end up uh, buying a house, and also getting rid of debts. Uh, no more uh, bad credits, uh, but people and families who are able to manage the uh, the whole family. Um, we, of course, at this, I would like to say at this stage, I am aware that a lot, including myself, a lot of us are, you know, are drinking herbs, you know, uh, there, there's a big increase uh, in that. And mind you, uh, you know, believe me that there are heaps uh, who are doing that, you know, uh, and also um, Maori. Uh, medicine and helps uh, them. So 
we advise people once they go and diagnose diagnose anything and 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 do uh, you know in the you know by doctors and then you know share with them how about these herbs that we are drinking etc. Uh, yeah, so it it it's done as well. Uh, there are also those who are spiritually you know possessed or uh, as you call in Tongan, you know, the Fagaavang, and there's quite a heap, and it's very common among young people. And uh, that still works here. In, a lot of uh, them are affected here in, in New Zealand. And of course, uh, we do that. Um, you know, uh, William, I think uh, I have talked uh, too long, but at least I have shared with you uh, that, uh, yes, a lot to, uh, is very appropriate and and it touches every aspect of uh, one's life. Uh, uh, you know, whether you are in a community or anywhere, but uh, but a lot to uh, factor uh, because we want also to um, uh, help our people uh, not to be just uh someone that, that just accept anything you know whether it's fatal or, or or not or whatever that you do feel uh that it is the will of god that you end up with uh in you know with whatever no the will of god is for people to live and to live abundantly and to live happily and peacefully uh, that is the will of god it is not the will of god that we do uh, suffer. And uh, we are very uh, fortunate that we have got a God that uh, is willing to go through your journey, whether it's being uh, happiness or sorrow or whatever, but being with us in our life journey. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry, but uh, I feel that uh, I've said enough, uh, uh, William. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Tevita. And that's uh, really, really, um... Uh, contributing well to our equation. We still want to solve the equation here of premature illness and premature death. And I think you have shown us some of the ways where churches can lead the way uh, with practical uh, living uh, and doing, not just talking in the pulpit. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Tavida. And um, for, for all of you listeners, uh, I'm sure you are... Um, like me, you are moved and um, enlightened, and I would encourage you to please um, uh, have your question. If you have some questions, you will have an opportunity to to speak and and, and discuss any question. But uh, do uh, join and write it down so that uh, in our chat, so that uh, we'll direct it to the to the speakers uh, later on. And I assume that my um, our friend from Australia is is here. Sione, are you? No, not yet. Mm, are you checking the the the, the names? The, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, uh, uh, Reverend Sione, if you are here, show yourself, please. <laughs> We're waiting you. Anyway. Um, let's uh, continue this uh, great discussion as Tevida has started. And of course, we, uh, Tevida is um, um, discussing his life experience and I have known Tevida for, for a long time. And yes, he's a great uh, advocate for community. He's a community development uh, thinking, always thinking about practical things for for for. for for people, especially uh, members of the church, so I um I I, I would like to um, um to continue this conversation and and, and maybe um, if there is anybody here, all of you who have a burning question to ask directly to Tevita, this is your opportunity. Please uh, unmute yourself and and show your face, please, and ask a question directly. Even if you just have a comment, because we have this time while we're waiting for the other speaker. Unmute, oh. Sione. Oh. 
Tanofa Lava, Reverend Bina, I work for Sport Canterbury here in North Otahi in Christchurch, and um, it's great to hear the, your messages about the Lotu and the impact that it has on the community. From a sporting regional trust, I'm, I'm just wondering how do organisations like ourselves work alongside the Lotus to support the Pacifica community for better health and wellbeing? How about you, Tavita? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, uh, some of the churches have got, uh, you know, uh, the organizations, uh, for example, within the Methodist Church, they uh, say uh, but there are also uh, uh, the Tongan. Sometimes you, you, sometimes people say, oh, the church minister is the key. Uh, our experience is uh, that uh, most of the church ministers are not the keys. <laughs> they are the barriers sometimes. It's very, uh, I would advise that, you know, there are people within the, the church uh, set up uh, that it will be, uh, for example, there are uh, young people uh, who are employees of other organization uh, that are passionate uh, with, you know, we are talking here uh, for organizations which do not have a lot of money because he's frozen. Or am I frozen? Welcome. A lot of people have uh, have participated uh, in that, uh, or have accepted it. But work with them, I would say yes, it's useful to work with the church ministers. But I would strongly recommend that you look for people who has who are employees in in such organizations or government agencies that are uh, in the church. Uh, to work with, uh, especially in the young, in the in the youth groups and the women's groups, they are the two groups that are easy to work with. Uh, to have your organization work together with a particular church, it's the youth group and the women's organization because mothers they have a lot of say in uh, you know in 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 programs. Uh, you know, uh, from the organizations. Yeah, thank you very much, Tevita, for that. And 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 um, I know there's a group uh, here from Tonga who's listening in. Um, Karen, um, maybe you can share your group, uh, someone from your group, if you if you want to share the experience from there from outside of New Zealand, uh, related to the question that's been asked. How does uh, uh, the group work there in? Um, connection with uh, any church there in Tonga. Malo Karen? But, um, if, if I may ask that you give time to Karen and her team to formulate some responses, uh, with your permission, if I may um, add something to what the Reverend has shared with us. Yes, please, yeah. Yeah. go ahead. Uh, Karen, in your team, you can... Uh, have a few minutes to uh, get your thoughts and then share the experience from outside New Zealand. Malos Yone. Yeah, firstly, the Reverend has been very um, humble and modest about his wealth of experience. But I know his uh, commitment and his um, untiring service to the community. I, I am the secretary of the Tongan In the Faith Leadership Network. And the Reverend is the uh, chairperson. Uh, similar to the uh, Siaola uh, Trust that he has established with his fellow Methodist uh, believers, uh, we established the network to co lead for the holistic well being of the Tongan community and to help in addressing the social challenges that he uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, one of the um, examples of how to do it 
uh, in addressing COVID-19 and other such national global challenges was the work that the Reverend and our trust, uh, our network led for the Tongan community by mobilizing the church leaders, the communities, families, not only in Auckland, but influencing also across the country uh, to go and have their vaccination. And that put the rate from a low 50 plus to one of the highest at the time of 90 plus. And the um, Ministry of Health at the time was full of praise for that work. That's just one small example of how faith is in action with you know, good leadership you know, and, 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 and shepherding as the Reverend has uh, mentioned. He mentioned briefly some of his programs. For example, the, uh, the house um, um, buying uh, scheme. The last time I had a conversation with the Reverend about uh, the outcomes of this, I think they managed within a few years to work with families of more than 70 uh, to buy their own home in Auckland, where uh, you know, the house prices are going through the roof. And um, the essence of that work is that to demonstrate that if you are uh, uh, prudent and frugal enough, you can actually uh, pull together your resources as a family to buy a home. As you know, um, housing is a major determinant of the health and well-being of the community. He also mentioned uh, his educational uh, initiative. It's called Laulo Taha. Uh, it has started more than a decade ago in Wellington, where he was serving there. And the outcome, as we had in our last conversation with the Reverend, the achievements of the students who have participated, and there are hundreds of them across the country, including now here in Auckland. Again, education is another major determinant of health and well being. It has uh, put students who are participants of this program at a high uh, 70 and 80 plus you know, percentage uh, compared to the national average of 70, 70 plus. And again, you know, that's faith, as the Reverend has said, when it's understood appropriately, God's word, and translate from the pulpit, you know, into the community and, 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 and demonstrate it in concrete outcomes. The, the final point is, as has been asked before, how do organizations outside uh, get, can work along with churches? You know, the, the uh, Reverend Devita has been, you know, very clear as to what are the weaknesses and what are the strengths and how we can go about it. But again, Siaola and the Reverend has been an example of working with some of the biggest providers in Auckland, like um, uh, the Fono, you know, to help in distributing uh, welfare resources to help our communities, not only during COVID-19, but also um, during the recent flood in Auckland and um, cyclone that we recently uh, faced. So I, I thought that I mentioned that so that we understand the, the rich experience behind this uh, humble you know, organization that has been set up by our co-worker here, you know, the Siaola. And uh, if you have a, a time, you know, visit the site and talk to the team and it's actually director, uh, Kathleen uh, Dwai, uh, who is working under the leadership of the, uh, Reverend. I thought, Abriyami, that I mentioned those things um, because I know the Reverend will not uh, talk about these things. He's very humble, but also focus on improving the, the negative side of the contribution of the church to the well being of the community. <laughs> Make sure that we talk, you know, uh, real stuff, you know, yeah. and address those issues because yeah. they can be also barriers, as he himself said, yeah. you know. And I thought that I mentioned that. Thank you very Thank much you. for the time. Thank you, Sonny. And, and, and that's a great addition to, to what Tevida has been talking. And, and of course, we're still waiting for, for Karen and the team from Tonga, but Lavinia has got a question there from one of the participants. Lavinia, can you please uh, ask that question now before we go to Tonga? Thanks, Miami. Um, the question here is for you, Tevita. It's from Wormsby. Um, do Pacific peoples refer to a model of care that encapsulates all the dimensions of health and well-being? And if so, can you please inform? 
Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm not uh, uh, occasion that uh, you know we we talk to uh, families, and we do not have different models or or, or models as you know as uh, some of the uh, agencies. They talk with the families, and if it's a health uh, uh, issue, of course we have Fono, we have Lang Mali, we have. Uh, uh, other uh, health agencies, we do refer them to them uh, because we 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 are not specialized in health, but we do refer them uh, to, to to them. Also, with the with the models, there are different models that uh, uh, um, mental health has got their own uh, uh, health um, education. Ministry of Education uh, uh, have got. The, uh, the model as well, uh, but us, uh, the only thing that we uh, try to is to work together, work together with the family, to try and advocate for them or refer them to the appropriate uh, health agency, who would which would uh, give them the best uh, uh, help they can get. I'm sorry, I cannot uh, uh, recommend any particular uh, uh, model. Uh, you know, um, thank you, thank you, Tavita. Yeah. William, can I just interrupt here? Um, I've put a link up to the Funua Ola model. I can see um, that. Also incorporates spirituality, which is on our website. So um, if you might want to refer to that, Wormsby. Hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let's see if we can have uh, the folks from Tonga. Uh, Karen, are you guys able to? Uh... Yeah. Uh, yes, William, can you hear us? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share what we do here in Tonga. Um, for us, uh, thank you, Reverend Finau, for what you shared. Uh, the approach that you recommended about um, working with various groups within the church um, to implement um, a, a lot of things, uh, that, that's the approach that we are taking at the moment. We um, we fund a lot of uh, projects with women, women's groups in churches, uh, youth groups in churches who um, submitted proposals for funding for Tonga Health to support um, health activities within the church. So we, we do um, follow the, the approach that you recommended. Uh, and of course, uh, the church leaders, the pastors in the church, they do also uh, play a very important role uh, in promoting messages, but then, as you mentioned, they are not the only ones. Uh, at the moment, most of the groups that we work with are women's groups and youth groups within the churches. So thank you. Yeah, but by the way, uh, uh, Karen is working with uh, Tonga Health Promotion Foundation. Uh, yes. And that, uh, that uh, foundation is being set up by the government. It's not uh, it's it's located with the, within the Ministry of Health, but separate from the Ministry of Health, and they do have a uh, funding from the government, uh, and then they use that funding to help the community development and many projects as uh, so. Thank you very much for that contribution. Um, have have we got Sione back with us? Sione Javier. Mm -hmm. oh. Unfortunately, I don't have a phone number for him. I only have oh, a, nice. his email. Uh, but but anyway, uh, let's continue the conversation. And and um, I see there is a question here, and this question might be open for for everyone to to pitch in. Why is specific well-being not improved and how can we as specific health promoter improve it? There you go. Um, any comments from, from any other participants? And then I would ask, uh, of course, those who are working as health promotion to have a go. I, as I said, it's not my field, but it's so common, Liami, uh, that uh, Pacific, uh, community, uh, even though the health issues is high, but the, you know, uh, the, it is only recently that uh, the government or the successive governments have tried to address 
but we, you know, uh, the cultural issues and other issues which uh, we experience as a low minority group uh, that we weren't. Uh, uh, we were neglected to some extent, or some of the programs were, um, you know, equity uh, issues. I think that's part of the, this is only part of the answer I'm giving you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Any anybody else would like to do have a, a say in this? And I'm opening this up for all of you, the participants. Please. Yeah. Can you put the, the yes, Setu. Yeah. Yeah, we've got my friend Elena here oh. who wants to share the news. Yeah, Thank you. Oh hi, my name is Elena, and I'm from Bow Screening. Uh, from Tuvalu. Um, with my views, uh, it's basic on the culture. Like we, we're trying to promote um, health eating lifestyle, but it's against our culture too. When we doing our feast with funeral um, weddings, and it's hard to change those. Um, culture um, that we've been uh, practiced from the island. And also, again, uh, when we do um, health nutrition course and to bring out to the community, and again, the community have to pay if they, they um, have to attend this uh, nutrition um, courses. That's uh, that's the only view I um I have experienced out there in the community. But thank you. Thank you, Elena, and I hope uh, Tuvalu is still uh, there when you go back to Tuvalu. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you very much, and, and and of course we can continue to to talk that uh, you know culture, our culture, um, culture is uh, is something that we make it to be and. If it's causing us a headache and problem, maybe we should consider changing that bit of the culture. But let me uh, welcome you to uh, Sione, who is uh, here speaking to us from Australia. Welcome, Sione, and uh, may I invite you to to take the the stage, please, and share with us your thoughts on the lot of factor. Malo, Sione. Oh. Um... Hello, I'm really sorry. I, I had on my diary that this is tomorrow. So um, someone had sent me the wrong date. Uh, so my apologies to everyone. I think it could be me. Sorry, sir. Uh, okay. Then you're the one to be blamed. <laughs> and I'm sorry to Tevita and, and others for, for my coming late. So I, I have not been able to... Uh, to follow along, but I have a, a, a few just uh, points, William and, and friends, that I'd like to um, to invite your your thoughts on. Um, number one is to ask those of us who grew up in faith communities, whether it's a church or mosque or temple, to um, just open up a little bit and rethink because the, the way we have been raised in whatever community we grew up in conditions how we think about this lotto factor. And I would say the same for those of us who did not grow up in a faith community. Uh, we may have views on what faith communities are like, uh, but I think this is an opportunity to rethink uh, those matters. So it's an invitation for um, for exploring and being open-minded. The second, uh, I want to distinguish, um, and I again, I apologize, Devita. Uh, I want to distinguish between lotu and what the Balangi call religion. Yeah. Uh, because religion and faith community tends to lean in a one direction. For me, lotu is a is a pacifica way of thinking in which everything is in lotu. You know, how we live, how we, how we do our work is in Lotu, is under this, this uh, umbrella of Lotu. 
Um, so lotto is a holistic thing. It's about uh, what I do to my body. It's what I do with my mind. It's what I do with my longings, my belief. Those in my Pacifica uh, uh, mind, they all come under lotto. Now, I know that uh, some of your audience, Viliami, are into health, which is uh, which tends to be about humans. And lotto is more than humans, because lotto is about how humans relate to other creatures, how humans relate to creation, how humans relate to the island, to Moana. So I, I, we need to think of lotto in a more holistic element. Whether you call that well-being or, or whatever you call that, it's it's a... It's more than my health. And this is where you can help us, uh, Viliami and your colleagues, that we, when we do a lot, we need to uh, affirm that it has to do with our bodies as well. Yeah? Church folk tend to think of the body as something that is not involved in the way that we live our faith or we live our, our commitments. So lotto needs to be... Uh, 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 holistic. The third thing that I invite your, your reflection on, your, or questions also, is that th this thing that, that the, the academy uh, have divided between religion and culture. Yeah, so Lotto is culture in the opinion of the Western uh, thinkers. Um, but, but religion and culture overlap in Lotto, so that whatever we do in, in religion is have cultural elements, whether you are Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim, that religion, Christianity, Juda Judaism, the established religions, those religious uh, claims or religious positions have cultural elements. Likewise, cultural teachings, cultural ways of Lotto have religious elements. So that, for example, when you do uh, those of I'm in the Methodist Church, I'm I'm a bad Christian, but those of us who are in the Methodist Church, like Devita, he's worse than me. Um, what we do as Methodists is influenced by our culture. Yeah, our culture as Tongans, the culture of Methodism that came from from England through Australia. So they, there's there are always cultural elements to religions, and I'm inviting us to also realize that there are religious elements to our cultures, yeah? Whether it's Fa Samoa, Angafagatonga, or whatever, the, what we claim to be culture have religious elements. And that brings me to what I call native religion, because native, you know, these things that we call native cultures, those are religious expressions, whether you're indigenous Australian, uh, by the way, uh, religious, the, the um, indigenous Australians, their culture have existed for, depending on who you ask, about 45 to 60,000 years ago, way before Hinduism was established, way before Christianity was established. And I want to say that those, what we call cultural ele uh, expressions, have religious elements in, in them. So this, this lotto factor is an opportunity for us to affirm our cultural practices. And I, I came in at the, at the last part of this previous conversation. You know, this Zangafakatonga, there are cultural, those are cultural elements, uh, cultural positions, but they have religious elements. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm inviting us to break this barrier between what is religion and what is culture. Maybe I'll stop there, Billy. I mean, this is part of the problem with being late because I, I don't, I don't know where the conversation has been so uh, up to this point. And uh, certainly, thank you very much. You know what they said about Jesus? Uh, it was four well, days Jesus late. Out of it. Yeah, so four days late, but still uh, <laughs> on time. Oh. I'm just example, in the, you know, you, you you're still on time. Don't don't worry about. Uh, being oh, I'm on, on a Moana time. Will, uh, yeah, will yeah, you're yeah, truly a Moana time, mate. Eh? Yeah. But, 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 but those are very, very uh, great thoughts and, and thinking. And I think we've been um, trying to explain that, but not as clearly as you have done. So I thank you so much for that one. And, and, and of course, there will be opportunity for, for more of this conversation before. 
but uh, but as uh, I I did um, and we we have uh, discussed earlier on uh, and 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 I did say something uh, along the line of what you what you're saying is that the the uh, the issue really here is that um, we we think that Lotto has become part of our culture, uh, but as you clarified there, of course it is. Uh, culture and religion uh, are merging. There are more elements that they are common. And, and I really like the, the thinking of having that uh, uh, holistic, uh, um, which is very indigenous thinking, uh, um, and thank you very much. Maybe, maybe um, this is a good time to just open it up for the participants. I think uh, the, what's the, uh, Reverend, uh, the new actor has been shared and, and Sione um, shared. Um, it's enough food for thoughts. And maybe we can open it up for the conversation for the, the rest of the time we have here. So uh, can I ask uh, Emma or Mariana to monitor this and, and see people who are asking questions or allowing them in to- Thank you, Mariana. Sorry, Meliana. Uh, as people are thinking, uh, William, if I can just add sure. that they're just like culture, religion has some painful elements. Yeah, just to say that religion is uh, or lotu is good for us doesn't uh, is not to say to romanticize. Yeah, just like as we tend to romanticize culture, we romanticize lotu as well. So sorry, uh, William. No, that's Meliana. okay. Yeah. Yes, Fadelupe, mm. Fadelupe, are you asking a question? Yeah, I am. Um, thank you for the opportunity to listen to our discussion today. But talking from a Samoan perspective, um, in regards to churches, I, I, have, I do agree with what Tevita has been um, well, what Sione has just been said about connective relations between culture and and churches. Uh, what happened here? Uh, talking back, how the how the, the 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 churches was accepted in Samoa from 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 my understanding from the Samoan, it was accepted in the culture. Um, yeah, and that's how this um, connective, uh, connective relations of the culture has been influenced um, each other. And uh, comes to different interpretations, different practices of Christianity within our Pacific, uh, Pacific Island. It's just in regards to the, the diverse of our culture and our traditionals. Um, talking about in Samoa, um, that um, how, how Samoa Christian, I'm, I'm talking as a, I am secretary of Palmston North Congregation of Christian Church. The, the motive for us to migrate, I'm talking about migration, migration, migrate to uh, overseas to New Zealand, uh, for example, it's for better life. However, um, what I've seen in, in, in talking about Samoan churches, it's looking at, um, um, because I'm donating for church um, a lot, it's like half of the fortune of your fortune goes to, to the church. In relation to uh, having a look at these two connection, if, if you're not giving unto the church, that affect your cultural perspective, yet you're not respecting the church. And, and, some, uh, and I've seen this a lot because this comes to as uh, brings out the reputation of the family. Who a family donated more to the church than the most understanding people of, of, how, of how, the, how you live your life to... Um, sacrifice everything 
And then a, 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 a great example here, you look at what are the big, biggest building here, Pacific biggest building here in New Zealand, biggest compare, most expensive uh, premises we have here. They are Samoan and Tongan churches. And if you, if, this is the thing that we, when we talk about lots, we don't, we, we're gonna, we're gonna dig down in reality of who are the people that are, con, are that are congregational, who are, are contribute to these churches, are the poorest people in New Zealand. They are the poorest I, I witnesses to the church I am, I am talking about. So this is the thing that I really appreciate to hear from our perspective and a health and well-being of our Pacifica, what are, what are um, the developments? Is there any modification of our spirit of our lottery uh, to change uh, um, the behavior of our uh, Christianity within New Zealand? Is there any um, other better way that we can, because the, if I, I'm talking from my perspective, uh, people who donate more, they get more blessing from the church. Um, but in reality of the life that we're living, uh, we, we're working the cold, we're working hard every day and night, every day to earn this uh, blessing that um, we're being that, that we're here in this country. It affects everything, educational level. Some of the families, they leave churches, they leave school early because of getting, getting into employment quite quickly to support family for churches. So these are the things I was really looking at on if there's any development from our perspective that we can work along with our ministers because um, I believe some of the ministers do, don't agree what we're doing to develop our community. The, the expectations of them develop the church to develop your faith. Thank you very much for being so honest, Father Lupe, and, and coming as one of the church leaders. That is really great to hear. Uh, can I invite uh, Sione and Tevida, please, to just uh, make uh, comments on those? Thank you. Sione? And then Tevita. No, they say that we always respect our elders, so maybe uh, Tevita should go first. <laughs> there you go, Tevita. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Fale uh, Lupe. I'm very grateful. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you one, uh, one of the ways. For example, uh, that's what Siola is doing. We have our grey, G R E I, uh, thing, uh, and that is uh, budgeting. Uh, G is for God, ten percent. R is for rainy day, ten percent. E is for expenses. It's about 70%, and I is for investment, that's uh, 10%. Uh, that, you know, it's only one of the ways. In my church, uh, I've just finished from, I stopped them from giving to church. The family is the priority. Their children, the family is priority number one uh, for them to look after, not the church. If they don't have money to give to the church, I told them, that's okay. They will have more blessing by looking after their family. That's uh, number one. Secondly, don't go and gamble to give to church. Don't go and borrow to give to church. Uh, don't go and, uh, and fundraise with a, a little cover club or a concert or whatever to give to church. You know, uh, I always encourage them to give to church uh, what they are extravagant on. Give the a percentage. Uh, you know, there are sometimes you waste a lot of money on your smokes or drink or cover or whatever. I challenge them, you know, consider a percentage of what of money you are just throwing away uh, to give it to the church. The church will survive on, on that. And, um, and, and there are some of the things that I have done. 
I'm sorry, uh, Father Yulupe, but that's only part of the answer I can give you. Siona will give you a better one. Thank you. Thank you, David. I know, not surprising, you have been kicked out of the church. Uh, Siona, <laughs> please. Uh, and then Lamenia, have a question. Yeah, Malo, Faktai, Father Yulupe, for that really important question. Um, and as Tevita was saying, that's what he does, yeah? I mean, each of the faithful, each of the ministers will have new things that challenge it. And then when their days come, they, they pass on, but the system remains, yeah, this system. And then the next generation will come, will be stuck in this. Or if you wanna use reggae talk, this shit system that controls religions, yeah? For me, that shit system goes back to the missionaries. Because when the missionaries arrived, they said, this is the way to salvation. And then the direction was directed to the other world. Yeah, this is the way to, to, to save yourself. And, and when the missionaries came to, I mean, the, uh, John Williams came to Samoa 18, 1830, 1835, um, they discounted or rejected or demonized our cultural things. Yeah, we have to follow the, the, the true religion which comes from Christianity. And if we follow that God, then we will be blessed in this life. This is the, 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 the system, the theological system that came with the missionaries and our churches are still stuck in that. Yeah, the mm. Samoan church, the Tongan church, all of our, our churches are stuck with that. And this is part of the, the struggle. How do we replace this system that controls our lives? And one way of doing that, go back to Lotu. Lotu is not just about, it's not otherworldly like Christianity is. Yeah, Lotu is about this, this life. And if we focus on this life, then maybe we can create a different system. So it's, 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 it's a good challenge, Palio uh, Lupe, uh, for those of us who are in the church. Yeah, let's go back to Malua and try to change the system. Yeah, mm. because I and the next generation of, of Faithi Au, we do things differently as Devita was saying, you know, the gray hair kind of people, uh, but the system remains. Mm. And how do we change the system? That's, that's the big, biggest challenge. And then there is a critical element here, which is the God factor. Yeah, people don't want to change the system because God might get angry with us. And if we leave God out of it, it would be easy to change the system. Yeah, just let Jesus rest for a little while, William. And then we can, we can change the system. And if we change the system, then maybe the families can keep you know, some of their earnings. I, I, I know how um, poor fam families are really struggling because they feel obliged. Huh? We need to do this for the sake of the church. Sorry, I, I, I don't have a local congregation, so I, this is my chance to preach. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sione, and we'll invite you to preach anytime. Um, uh, Lamina, did you have a, a yeah. question from the audience, please? Um, yeah, thanks, William. I, mean, I have a question from um, Sophia Bloomfield. Um, quite a long question. So, Sophia, maybe you'd like to ask it yourself? Not so much a question, but more so a thank you to um, Dr. and Reverend Javier for your refreshing and important Thalano. I work in public health in New Zealand and a lot of the feedback that I receive from community, but also see within the system is that this health defined and create a Pacific approach when it's uh, applied, unfortunately includes excludes parts of our communities, especially those who um, don't consider themselves spiritual or belong, belong to the LGBTQIA plus communities. And so they often fall through the cracks of the health system or are not given the opportunity to sit um, and represent their communities at decision-making tables. So um, I just want to support your Dalanor in saying that the approach that we use for Pacific peoples needs to be approached for all of them and not just... Um, those who consider themselves religious or Christian. And I think when the wave has come with conversations around decolonization and re-indigenization, which a lot of our Māori um, 
Indigenous people are talking about what role do we have in that and, and you know, the, the parts that we play with our community. So I just wanted to thank you for that refreshing Bellanor because it's often not spoken about in the circles and spaces that I'm in. So thank you. Thank you. And I echo that, uh, uh, Sophia. And um, I, I, I mean, this conversation we can go on for the rest of the day, and, but I'm mindful of the time. Uh, uh, is anybody looking after the time there? Emma and uh, Mariana, how are we doing? We're 11 minutes past 12. Okay. Um, I mean, but can we still continue on for maybe uh, another yes. 10 minutes? We can. Yes, because I think I think we let, let's go on for another 10 minutes before we, we wrap it up. Uh, and, and again, um, we'd like to hear some uh, from some of you. Thank you very much. Anybody, please. Yes, Naita. Oh, Naita. Yeah, Malolele. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy to be here and be part of this um, forum and discussion. Um, I consider this as a very important topic. Uh, how I see culture and Christianity, it's one thing. So I think we are all at different level, different uh, stages of understanding things. Um, coming back to the culture in relation to the giving, you know, I'll go back to the Bible and what the Bible states, you know, God de um, demands one tenth of our income. You know, we can have our opinions and everything else. We are dealing with a divine God, you know. So, but as I mentioned, we are all at different level and uh, for me Christianity is not a religion it's a relationship with God and uh, Holy Spirit is here and he directs us he doesn't you know and he demands us when we give we give cheerfully if you are not in a position to give and give out of abundance yeah so God is not a God that enjoyed people being poor no God died on the cross for a prosperous uh, generation and people we all come here for a better life a better life is a Christ, a life with Christ. Yeah. So, um, and, and I am very proud of it. I, I believe it depends. And if I'm asked, what's my identity? My identity, I am Tongan, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I'm excited, you know? So, and it's, uh, I bring Isaiah 61. I'm anointed to what? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me to what? To bring healings, to bring, release people, to people who are bounded in our prisons to, um, you know, being bounded by, uh, like, for example, um, uh, addiction and, and things like that, things that beyond mere humans' uh, uh, power and authority, you know, Spirit of God is with us and he can, and that's my job, you know, I have worked in health promotion and, um, for five years, that's more than 20 years ago, and I've been with education in Tonga and also here in the community, and also, you know, I was born, raised in a Methodist uh, Wesleyan, and I'm proud of it and where I am now. And, uh, and that's our job, to bring hope for the people, you know, people who are bounded, people who are sick, people who are poor and needy, you know. So it is a major call. It is a major goal. And um, so with regards to public health, community health, you know, people are sick, people are poor, people need help, you know. So we should be proud of it. And Christianity, it's another level and it's a different dynamics. So I am proud of being a Christian and I'm proud of my God He's a living God. He's not a dead God. And he's with here with us. The Bible says, Jesus has gone to the right hand of the father and he has sent us the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is the greatest helper, the comforter, the counselor, and you know, to comfort us and to help us. So. Uh, and, you know, the question, what is culture? Culture is basically how we do things. Yeah, how do we do things? And for me, as a, as a Christian, and the first question, it's all about doing the right thing and what things glorify God and please God. Because at the end of the day, life does not end here. There's life to come. And so uh, to my fellow uh, community health workers, public health workers, it's time to arise. Isaiah 61 states, arise and shine for the light has come. And um, much love to you all. And uh, 
It's Christianity. It's not a topic to downplay. It's a topic that we're talking about a mighty God that he's here with us and to empower us so that we can serve our people and make a difference. That's our job is to make a difference out there. If people are unwell, make them well. You know, what does the word say? Lay hands on them, you know, rebuke the devil. You know, so it's, it's a very powerful thing and I'm so proud of it. And uh, thank you very much. You have a great afternoon. Malo Apito. Thank you very much for that contribution, uh, Anaita. Uh, Lavinia, do you have another question and maybe that will uh, uh, wrap up our session? Actually, I have quite a few questions here, but I'll ask um, the first yeah. one is from Sione, and that's to the other Sione. Um, the question is, uh, how do you go about changing the system systems? Malo Sione, Malo Lavinia. Um, for me, okay, let, let me put it this way. I've, I've been involved in theological education for over 30 years. So that's where the system is protected in theological education. If we change that system, then maybe it will, the, the, the church and the future will change. Uh, to, to use as an example, uh, in the last uh, eight, nine years, the Trinity Theological School, which is of the Methodist Church in Auckland, tried to change the system by engaging coloniality and the presence of coloniality in our cultures. So give it another five years and then we'll see if that has affects the change of the system. Uh, Seattle Tai Theological College back in Tonga is now in the process of, of uh, uh, reviewing and revising its curriculum in order to be ecologically friendly, or at least be aware of ecological change. Now, if we change the curriculum of the theological uh, education, that will influence the ministers of tomorrow. And if the ministers change, then the congregations will change. For me, that's how you change the system. You change the, the curriculum, what we feed to the theologians of the future, yeah? I'm saying that I, well, I started by saying that I've been involved in this for 30 years. So it's us to, to be blamed. And those of us who are involved in this form of education uh, uh, need to accept that, uh, that, 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 uh, uh, that responsibility. How you, Viliami, and your colleagues might help, maybe you can also push theological providers, providers of theological education to engage with, with health, to engage with well being and to realize that it really doesn't matter what you believe if your body is falling apart. And, you know, my body is a straight guy, is as, as, as much a temple for, the, for God as the body of the rainbow brothers and sisters and trans that we have. So, this is something where the system, we in theology and religious studies can try to change as we have done with Trinity and with Sedotai, but we need to do this as a, um, as a, as a whole. It's a rather long answer, but I know it's there, there are still some, some more matters for Kalanoa. Yeah, this is the beauty of, of our conversation. We are not to uh, get the solution, but you know, for us to share our thoughts. Uh, Tavira, you want something to comment on? You know, um, you know, I'd like to confirm, uh, to affirm what uh, uh, Sione, uh, you know, was saying. And part of the issues and the problem is that sometimes we try and play God, you know, in the church. Uh, uh, you know, um, my ancestors, over 300 in my village were killed in the name of God and in the name of spreading the gospel of Christianity which is why we have to be very careful that we do not play God in what, uh, uh, in what we are doing. Uh, if God is love, uh, what sort of God that killed my ancestors? So we are not downplaying God, but it's people who are playing God that is important that we do know. Uh, you know, in, in relation to, uh, to the issue that we are, are talking about today, uh, we are able to make changes, you, you know, in them. Uh, sometimes in, in what we are doing, and a lot of us in the, in the, in the health promotion uh, agencies, we have done a lot of 
of changes uh, in terms of uh, normally we used to run with the government and always the government who who help us. But now look at the so many clinics, look at the health agencies who are able to do uh, uh, to deliver uh, for our people. Uh, uh you know in our own language in our own culture and i think that's a a, a, a moving forward so we we are going towards that direction but at the same time we have to keep on causing noise you know uh um, raising our voice and you know to these sort of uh, uh issues we can you know we can change all of these uh, i think if we keep on doing and not ne ne not neglecting our our people also thank you william william can i just add something because somebody asked uh, about tithing yeah that that tithing in in the biblical uh teachings about 10 percent to give to this institution to support this system that oppresses our minds and our hearts and our bodies islam tithing is one of the pillars of Islam, yeah? And the tithing, the pillar of Islam is about tithing to give in order to help the poor. So maybe that's where uh, 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 Fale and me need to become a little more Muslim rather than Christian. And then we know that we tithe in order to help the poor rather than tithe in order to uphold the system. And that's a serious uh, suggestion, Fale. We, we should bring some uh, Muslim teaching into our Christian uh, circles. Uh, Hello, William. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for that contribution. And, and I'm very mindful of the time, but at the same time, I'm aware of the interest that's been raised here. And, and I can assure you, this will not be the last time we'll discuss uh, this topic, neither the last time we will invite this uh, uh, speakers to to come in and and be with <laughs> us. Uh, so I think we we are coming to the end uh, of of the session here. But uh, please, um, I I do thank you very much. And I, my apology for anyone who hasn't been given the chance to to voice yeah, your opinion so to lovely. share your your mm -hmm. credo. But uh, we'll definitely look at any question that you voice us, and we will. Uh, try to uh, give you uh, some answer uh, through email or so. But um, at the beginning, I said that I have a formula that I say preventable death or preventable illness times premature death equals Pacific people divided by lot of factor. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to to modify that formula now and say, yes, premature or uh, preventable illnesses times premature death equals Pacific people times lot of factor. I think, I think that's the, the equation that I'm uh, arriving at uh, at this point. And this equation, of course, will continue to work on it uh, as we move along. But let me um, thank you so much for each and every one of you. Uh, please make sure that we do have your content. Uh, as I said, that this will not be the last, and this really is the beginning of something that we were going to explore. Because clearly, clearly, uh, we have benefited a lot from the law to factor. We haven't uh, uh, probably have not do justice as to uh, to really know what it is and to use it. Uh, effectively, effectively, and uh, I do thank you especially to our distinguished uh, speakers, uh, Sione. Sione, we spend a lot of time talking about your your spelling of your name with my colleagues and talk about the change of alphabet and so forth. But but thank you so much, Sione, for joining us from Australia and of course from uh, Tevita from North Shore, uh, right here in in Aotearoa. And uh, thank you so much for, for your generosity of your time and willingness to be vulnerable and uh, admit uh, some very, very uh, uh, good um, and, and share with us uh, your thoughts on, on this topic. I thank you also for those who, who join us today, uh, those from Tonga and other places as well. And thank you for the team from the Health Promotion uh, Forum of New Zealand. Thank you for your help, especially Emma and Mariana, 
for getting this session. And, and, and with this, I, um, I'd like to close this uh, with a, a little nod to before we, we finish. May your feet be as strong as the stripping of the Polynesian canoe. May your arm be far reaching as the arc of the Pacific Moana. And may your heart remain peaceful and calm as the sunset of our terror. And may the mana of Hikuleo, Tangaloa, and all the gods, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, remain with each and every one of us till we meet again. Amen.